So what does the future of AI networking look like? Where are some areas of improvement that are happening now and over the next two to three years? So uh, first of all, let's start with improvements in Ethernet. So as we know, we're at 400 today, moving to 800 quickly. Uh, before long, we'll have 1.6 terabit and 3.2. So the, the march of Ethernet continues on and we will continue to take advantage of these greater speeds and build ever faster networks simply based on the progression, the natural progression of Ethernet as it continues to increase in speed. Uh, the second area that a lot of folks are working on, uh, Google has been very open with some of their work here is optical cross connect. So what they've done is they have connected, interconnected their GPU infrastructure directly with optical cross connects. Instead of using an ethernet or InfiniBand network, they've decided to connect with uh, really a, a, an optical mesh between all these devices so that they can communicate directly at very high performance without the overhead associated with uh, switches and routers. Now, this is not generally something that is approachable for uh, most enterprises or operators because it's, uh, it requires a lot of domain knowledge to develop and, and build this. Uh, there are a lot of folks in the research industry who are taking a look at how we might leverage optical technologies uh, a little more strongly in the uh, tiered construction of artificial intelligence networks. Uh, nothing on the immediate horizon, but it's an interesting area of science that we always pay attention to. Uh, the next piece is a little more practical, but it's one that's gaining a lot of attention, and that is uh, as we move forward into a world where real estate and power availability are really the long pole in the tent to deploying data center infrastructure, we're no longer really bound by supply chain and some of the other pieces that we were only a few years ago. We're really taking a keen look at how much real estate we can acquire based on where energy availability is. So the idea of a service fabric, this is really a, an advancement in data center interconnect understanding so that we can link together multiple sites with very highly performant links. Today's data center interconnects tend to, be, tend to be very skinny compared to the capacity within the data center. Now we're looking at beefing up the links between buildings and across geographies such that they can pass both inference, uh, latency bound traffic, as well as uh, training traffic, which is bandwidth bound. So service fabrics are, are a very interesting area of, um, of development and we expect 2025 will have a lot of activity across a number of different types of operators that are looking to deploy and leverage service fabrics to combine and federate uh, AI capacity across the globe. I've mentioned a couple times, but I'll re-mention it, the advancement in chips that are happening. So you have these new companies that are taking a look at the inference space. Um, it's well believed that inference is the, the lion's share of business opportunity when it comes to deploying GPU as a service. Uh, the training infrastructure is important uh, for, a for a small number of people, but everyone's going to be using agents. Every single consumer on the planet will be using agents, probably dozens or hundreds of them over the course of a month. And so having the ability to infer at a very, very low unit cost, being able to scale that up is of keen concern. So the chip vendors are really working very hard to make sure that they're focusing on the inference space in order to provide the best efficiencies in that part of the world. And, uh, and lastly, as I mentioned before, Ultra Ethernet. So this is a group of several hundred vendors that have come together in order to really drive advancements and improvements in the underlying communications infrastructure based on Ethernet. So there's several different working areas. The standard will be released, and that's when uh, Nokia and others will be very vocal about what the standard contains and future support for those standards. But at the highest level, Ultra Ethernet themselves have provided some updates in these areas. So there'll be an Ultra Ethernet transport, which replaces classic RDMA and some of the, uh, the weaknesses that it has. So the, the, the transport piece will be able to provide some more resiliency and just be uh, more modern uh, transport for direct memory access between devices. Um, security is a first class citizen, so there's pieces around um, authentication, authorization, and privacy, which allow transport, especially across geographic domains, to um, be secure and private from uh, prying eyes. Um, In-network compute is an interesting area. So this is the idea that you would embed capabilities in the network itself to uh, process traffic, to process DMA traffic, ultra ethernet traffic. So think of a store and forward model for these, uh, this bulk data instead of having to go from end to end. The network no longer is just a highway, it actually provides capability to store and act on that data if necessary. So some interesting work there. And uh, finally, communications collectives. So when you talk about having a new transport, you also want to have the right communications collectives around that. Um, I mentioned before that each vendor has their own um, uh, language in terms of providing for those different types of communications models. 
Ultra Ethernet is trying to standardize those, bring them together so that everyone can operate on the same set of verbs and communications patterns in the future, having, uh, again, increasing the ecosystem, providing uh, reduced risk and better compatibility across the vendor community.